Hey everyone, welcome to Limitless Radio Cast, episode 107. So the people asked for it, and now the people are going to get it. Chad and I are hanging out with our good friend Brad Scarborough. He is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt under Chad Kuhn at East Coast Martial Arts. He is also a registered Ohio High School referee for wrestling and much, much more. We get into all kinds of awesome stuff. And if you guys are not subscribing to our YouTube channel, you need to for this show because Brad brings some very funny things that you have to see. So you guys throw those headphones on, turn that volume up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, this show is also being brought to you by Global Auto Detailing located in North Canton, Ohio. They have interior services, exterior detailing services, complete detail services. You can get monthly memberships. You gotta check these guys out. They are great at what they do. Warpath 55 located in Maslin, Ohio. Lanky Fight Gear. OldBonesTherapy.com. Thomas Webb of DeHoff Realtors. Candry Law LLC. Magic City Brewing Company. M&H Beans Coffee Company. Ronald E. Butler Tax and Accounting LLC. Limitless Tape. Listen guys, these are our sponsors and they help us tremendously each and every week do this show. So we ask you guys to support them as much as they support us. Now enjoy the show oh my god hey everybody <laughs> welcome to the show so chad and i have the great honor and privilege to hang out with our good friend brad scarborough he is a brazilian jiu-jitsu wow. black belt under chad coon with team james klingerman out of east coast martial arts in canton ohio he is, he works for iHeartRadio during the day savage at night he is also an ohio high school wrestling referee if i pronounce if i say that right brad if not correct me but anyway brad thanks so much man for hanging out with us we appreciate it very much and if you guys didn't notice that he is a 20 2009 almost to 29 2009 naga champion right gold medalist of, gold medalist yeah. out of, uh, <laughs> good champion uh, yeah. medal yeah out of, he was a white belt at the time by the way guys he is now a black belt so. So yeah, gold medalist, and uh, I've won other gold medals as well. As a matter of fact, I've never competed and not won a gold medal, Terry. So, uh, granted, in my limited competition career of 10, 10 matches, maybe eleven matches, um, I, I didn't lose. So nice. it's true. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. I did not know that. I actually there, there you go. Yeah, I, re I retired. I retired uh, at the at my prime, at the top of my competition. <laughs> prime. What belt were you when you retired? <laughs> Blue. Blue. Uh, done, so. It's like I'm done. Perfect time. This is too. This is too easy for me. I'm done with this. I'm out. <laughs> made, made made perfect time. So at the time we uh, we had a lot of people competing and uh, it was a lot of fun. So we not we we still have a lot of people competing actually. Uh, yeah. So, but I would say at that time, Chad, you can correct me. Yeah. You say the majority of us were competing. Now the school's so big. Yes. So Our yeah. competition's probably bigger than it was then. But, for sure. Uh, probably only 25% of our students uh, are, are East Coast members compete now. Compete Maybe now. Yeah. less. Yeah. So probably less, yeah. Yeah. Uh what did, which gym did you go start going to at East Coast, Brad? <clears throat> so, the, not I, the last one, but the one before that? The first one, yeah. The first well, one. Uh, yeah. The, the first difference. one that was not in Steve Hyman's garage. Oh, yeah, yes. that's what okay, there you that's go. what I was gonna ask yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. So um yeah, started there and it was uh, very early on. Chad, uh, I remember walking in and there was a bunch of people in basketball shorts and, uh, you know, <laughs> t-shirts and tank tops and basically slapped hands and continued to beat the shit out of each other for 45 minutes. And then, uh, yeah. that was jujitsu class. Yeah, and here that's what you do now in the morning to everybody in class. <laughs> when you get everyone out one, there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's very one-sided now. Um, so, you know. Brad teaches our 615 in the morning for all those bright and early people, which is actually quite honestly, it's awesome because it still gives people an opportunity and he's willing to step <laughs> into that role and uh, teach everyone those, you know, his techniques or any kind of techniques within the world of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So it's really cool. So again, anyone out there is listening and if you're local, you got to come in, you have all opportunities during the day to train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu <laughs> and you might actually be able to earn a gold medal at a competition under brad's tutelage why don't not, you not, brad not, not this one <laughs> brad not why don't one. you why don't you hang that up at the 615 and the guys can try to beat you for that mm, there might no. be some that can <laughs> <laughs> depends on who shows up that day yeah as a good as a good instructor i would want all my uh, uh attendees to be able to beat me to at beat some me juncture, yeah. right so, <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Uh, so 615 is an unbelievable environment. It's it's a blessing. And uh, I remember when we first started doing it, What? how long has it been now, Chad? A couple of years? Uh, maybe uh, a couple of years. I mean, it's definitely over a year. Yeah, sure. I was going to say, you're so, probably coming up on about two years now yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It uh and I remember at first, man, I could be committed to getting up so early and you know, every week and now I look forward to it. I, I look up uh the night before, like, you know, what are we gonna go over, what are we gonna do, and kind of put together the class uh the night before and I'm I'm excited about Tuesday and Thursday mornings now. So it's a it's a been a real blessing. So I love Yeah, it. and it's you know, it's allowed a lot of guys that couldn't didn't have time to train, yeah. right? We've got we've gotten new members out out of it and guys in the evening that you know whatever they couldn't train in the evening so now they have an outlet so it's yeah. awesome before that's, work and everything yeah that's what i love about that so hearing people and if people say well i can't do anything i'm like listen man we have a super early class like yeah. you guys can go to you could go to the super early yeah. class <laughs> for for us not being a full-time brazilian jiu-jitsu gym we have as many classes as most full-time brazilian jiu-jitsu gyms yeah for you know? facts yeah for sure yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, our schedule is very conducive to busy people and uh, there's a lot of people that come in the morning that'll come in the afternoon or maybe they'll yeah. come at night yeah uh, they, they'll find a class wherever they can squeeze one in or get to and that's a really cool thing to be part of as well is just to give so many people opportunities to get in and uh take a class and and partake in uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu at east coast so it's a yeah. that's a blessing as well being able to yeah. present that kind of a uh, a schedule for everybody so yeah, cool. for sure. Daryl, uh, Daryl came to Nogi last night and I made him take off his morning rollers, uh, hoodie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like you can't wear those colors at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually, oh, that, it was a genius idea that you, mm -hmm. did you come up with that, Brad? Like, did you, yeah, yeah. got to, got to represent, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, it's like our colors. So I thought and it's pretty much the same core folks, uh, same mm -hmm. core people that do come in the morning and then We'll get a, a little bit of rotation, you know, some people, sure. uh, additional people that come through. So I thought, you know, what a cool way to identify yourself and be part of something that you're already part of. Right? Yeah. We're just yeah. a segment of East Coast. Right. And this is when we come in and enjoy the company and enjoy the training and, and start our days and our weeks yeah. like that. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. It takes special people to get up at, you know, 545 in the morning, grab their <clears> stuff, <throat> get ready and head over to the gym. Let's be honest. It's not it's not easy or the faint of heart. Like I give, when Chad told me that you were going to be teaching that class, I was like, holy crap. I'm like, that's a huge commitment, which is awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know, like, I don't know what you thought, Brad, like how many people would come, but I didn't think it would be consistently what you get, you know, 10 to 15 or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah all, it's I consistently awesome. thought that there would be two, you know, or <laughs> two one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You and one other. <laughs> yeah. And special. I like how you put that special. <laughs> yeah. So very awesome. special people show up at, in the morning and, and, and most of them get there. We start at 615. Some people get there consistently at 614. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. I, I, I honestly yeah. we don't get there at five, uh, 550 and, you know, do whatever you're going to do. Get there at 615. Just get there. You know, that's yeah. all that matters. So yeah, it's important. And, uh, the morning rollers do. So I did. I don't know if I showed this, this to you guys. <laughs> Uh, pretty nice it's, 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 it's pretty nice break? it's pretty a shiny man like it's really uh you know it's still it's in glare. great condition there's a glare yeah it's a glare to it 2009 yeah. arnold world oh. grappling champion because Gold i medalist. shine it regularly <laughs> i shine it and i look at it until i spend time with it so how's training going for you now man how's everything going and uh good I how you feel uh, i need to train more uh i'm very conscious i've always been very conscious about time and you know letting my body be in charge of and telling me when i can train and when i can't train uh, i don't like to train injured even though i do it sometimes I, sure. I, I like to be no less than two days a week and uh, there's times when i really get going i want to train every single day twice a day sometimes you know yeah. so it just depends i'm very very uh, motivated uh, to, to always get in and uh, I try and just do whatever my body's telling me, you know, if, if my neck's hurt, then I, I try and take it easy. I might sure. go into class. I may not uh, uh, live roll, but I, I still try to at least get there yeah. and take part and watch or listen. Um, and teach so, too. Teach. Yeah. 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 So, You're present. You're present for us, you know, uh, under, under, you know, 
I say underclassmen, but I mean, it's in a sense, it's, you know, underclassmen sort of, you know, in a way, you know, from a belt level, but I mean, you're present. So that's, you know, that's virtually important. And it's important for people to listen to you as a black belt, you know, saying this, we say it all the time on this show, be smart, man. If your body's telling you like, Mm -hmm. don't, especially if you're older, like, oh, I can fight through this. Well, good luck. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, why? Right. Why? Like what purpose? uh, Yeah. Unless you're training for something where you're going to win 50 grand you know, or you're going right, to exactly. hundred grand, um, yeah. then th- just coming in, uh, uh Daryl's a great example of that. He's, you know, he, he will come in and he'll say, you know, my, he just did this, my next or So I'm just going to, I'm going to do the, uh, you know, I'm going to just go through class and I'll watch while we look, roll. I'm like, well, you do me a favor, but will you coach while, while you're watching people roll, you know, give them input, give them feedback, uh, you know, white belts, blue belts, uh, they love to coach. <clears throat> so give them, empower them, give them the opportunity to do that. So if you're not going to roll and you're dinged up or you're not feeling good, at least you're here, number one. And number two, um, give back, uh, provide feedback, take part, mm-hmm. you know? So Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to have, like you said, Brad, to empower them. And I think we've always been good at East Coast about doing that, getting, you know, hey, you know, I had Jay Stu teach baseball chokes one time and I've had Dan do some leg attacks. And I think we've always been pretty good. I, a couple of weeks ago, I, I told the guys that I, w- I would like to see somebody step up that wants to teach you know what i mean like we have our guys that do um there's some higher ranks that don't like i've tried to get brian mueller to teach he will not do it he will come and like i had nobody to open up on a wednesday once nobody was around and brian's like well i'll get logan's key and i'll open up but we can just do an open mat like Mm -hmm. he wouldn't he wouldn't show anything but he'll show things he'll teach you off to the the side he's listening to this show so brian (laughs) challenge 2024 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody has their own identity and that's one yeah. of the coo- coolest things about the mats and East coast particularly, right. It's one of the things I fell in love with early is just how it brings everybody together and allows them to be their own identity when they're on the mats. And Brian has definitely uh, found his identity on the mats and yep. talk about always coming. There's a, he's the epitome right? yeah. uh, of always coming. Right. So there's been many times where he's been uh, dinged up and or he's been sore or something's going on with him and he's still there he still yeah. comes in and he still takes part and still uh, provides feedback on a one-on-one basis off to the side so yep he's the king of that so yeah thank you brian if you are he's listening king. to this you better be listening <laughs> yeah. To this. yeah he he, is, he he is a loyal listener i know he is he uh, he's come him. a long he's come a long way from mr hyman making him roll with tennis balls in his hands <laughs> yeah i don't remember that <laughs> yeah it might have been before i don't know he he didn't start before you did he no, uh-uh. no, but no. I would have, if I was rolling back then, I would have told him, get rid of them tennis balls. <laughs> come get your medicine. <laughs> come get your medicine. Listen to you. Oh my goodness. So, but no, now we're older, right? So you yeah. think about it, you know, there's a big difference between 35 and 50, you know, when you start rolling and you're <laughs> oh, 33, 34, yeah. 30, I mean, you can lock horns and you can get after it out there. You're yeah. still, still at that athletic prime, you know, Brian and I, at the age we're at, we're, we get something different out of the sport and we extract what we want. We're very selfish about it. And uh, I love that about how jujitsu can give back to you when you're at those ages and time frames and all junctures of life, it can give you what you want to take out of it. It's mm-hmm. a special 100%. thing about jujitsu. So love it. Yeah. hundred percent. Do you remember your first time you walked in? You oh first, yeah. Remember your yeah. very first class? Absolutely. I remember, I remember the first bad position I got put in. So, um, I remember s- some big old country fella from new Philadelphia who was an airplane mechanic. Um, he was wearing basketball shorts and a wife beater. And, um, <laughs> you know, I came from a place that was an American jujitsu, a uh, judo, a keto and Taekwondo gym. And, uh, I was, uh, I was embarrassed to say that I was coming from American jujitsu, right? Because Brazilian jujitsu is so commercialized and so right. predominant, sure. you know? So I didn't want to tell anybody I, uh, I came from an American jujitsu gym. And I was rolling with this fella and he was bigger and stronger. And, and I remember he got me in this crazy key lock position and just basically squashed me. I was like, okay. <laughs> I remember trying to decide, do I really want to come back? <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I, I was compelled. I'm like, you know what? That dude ain't going to kick my ass again. That's just how this is going to go. I'm going to train. And I'm going to, and, and I did, I became dedicated. And uh, there's that, that chosen suffering that kicks in for us when we yeah, we choose sure. to to make progress through suffering. And I remember that first class being chosen suffering. I'm like, you know, I, I'm choosing to do this and it's not always easy. But when I left, I felt amazing. Yeah. I'm like, wow. So, 
They said, you know, we kind of laugh at it. You said earlier that first class we beat the shit out of each other, but it was a lot of that back then, right? <laughs> it was well, a it was a lot different, a lot different on on the uh, intensity of the roles and what you could. I got heel hooked my first class. I've told a lot of people that, you know. Yeah, yeah. We try to keep the students now. Before yeah. it was like, ah, beat that new guy up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then if he comes back, you're like, ah, you're good, you're good to go, man. You're yeah, awesome. I got, I got <laughs> yeah. heel hooked by I got heel hooked by Aaron Simon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. No did warning. Just, no. No. Just, no warning. Nothing. You didn't deserve it, though, did you? I don't think so. No. Yeah. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. You did deserve yeah. it. <laughs> Does anyone ever deserve it? Oh yeah. I mean, there are people who deserve it. I take that back because I've probably wrist locked people, that, and I'm like you deserved it <laughs> yeah. like you need you know, over down. the over the years we get people that come in all the time that just want to test their wherewithal you know <clears> that they, <throat> that's their sole purpose of coming in is they want to see you know where they stand in the the i guess the fighting org chart per se right. even though we're just there doing what we do every day or you know multiple times a week they're coming in to test themselves so in those situations sometimes a little bit of enforcement is necessary you know yes. you gotta, Sure. Yeah, to say, hey, let's check this at the door. This place is ego-free. Most 90% of the people in here could kick your ass. So yeah. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a big deal. But I think yeah. that makes it, like you said, Brad, it makes it such a great community, great gym that we're in, obviously, to be a part of and, and to because of that. Because you also have the other people like yourself or, you know, Chad or, or Timmy or, you know, Steve, the other black belt, or, you know, Brian, you know, there's guys that are going to step in and handle that. That can't, you know what I mean? Like handle those guys on the mat, not in a vicious way, but a way of teaching them, like, hey, man, you got to calm down or relax, or, you know, I want you to come back. So I need you to calm down because I want you to be a part of this. It's not just like beat you up, send you out the door and be like, well, that's your own fault. You were stupid when you came in the door, because let's be honest, every person that comes through that door, 90% of them are probably pretty stupid when it comes. To, they're really stupid when it comes to jujitsu, if you know nothing, but they're also like ego stupid. Like I'm trying to fight you. I, uh, rolled with a young man this week. Uh, I haven't rolled with any white belts in a super long time. And I, I, it was a mid decision. I was like, oh, I've challenged myself here a little bit. And I saw Stinson and Chad look over at me like, What's he doing? Like, why? Yeah, why you're fighting. Just, you're and, fighting. And, but I was super relaxed. And Brian Mueller asked me after, you know, we talked about it. And I was like, I felt really relaxed. Like, everything was slow. Like, it was just fine. I knew he was going really hard because he doesn't know anything. Like, he, he wasn't trying to hurt me. He was just like, like the more of, please don't kill me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, he's trying to like grips as hard as he could. And I was like, huh. I was like, I, remember this when I was here, when I first started and I'm so glad that's way gone. You know what I mean? And I just relaxed and it was good. It was, and he's a great young man. I hope he continues to come back and stuff, but I was just thinking there are some people that have come in and not done that. <laughs> they, they fight every, every time. And they still, maybe to this day, I mean, Chad, it's, we've talked about that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it's occasionally you have people that are very capable too, you know, so that's an entirely different situation. When sure. Definitely. And they, you know, I, I, people always ask in the age old discussion about wrestling and what's the best martial art base. Well, I think anytime you were to start training in kindergarten, five days a week, nine months out of the year, and you did that for 12 years, <laughs> that's going to be a good base, right? Yeah. I don't care if it's wrestling or uh, judo, jujitsu, no matter what it is, yeah. it's, it's very location based in, in, in Japan. If you ask them, what's the best base, it's judo, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so wrestling is one of those things that somebody can train and in, in they're training full style for 12 years. They did a couple of years in college. They come into a jujitsu gym. They're going to be trained in grappling, you know, right. um, and that's an entirely different situation how you handle that than just a tough guy street brawler that comes right. in. Right. Um, exactly. hundred so, percent. Um, both are welcome though. Yeah. Think, yeah. yeah hundred percent. Agree with that, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Come on in. Um, I love when wrestlers come in. Cause I think, uh, it gives, it gives the, us students, however you want to say, it, uh, a little look, a little bit different look. You know what I mean? Maybe do some other moves that maybe we don't get the opportunity to do so much um, in, it, you know, when we're rolling versus mm -hmm. a wrestler, because a wrestler, you know, Chad and I have said this before, you know, wrestlers are bred differently. <laughs> and we say that, you know, in, in a funny way, but Brad, you know this, I mean, you, you, you know, you've been around it, you're around it still to this day. Wrestlers are grinders. They're hard workers. They're not, they're yeah. not fearful. You know what I mean? Like they, they don't really have fear in them when they fight 
one another. Or they're really getting there, bending their bodies. So when you get a good wrestler that comes into the gym, if you ask them, you wrestle like, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> or you roll with yeah. them one time and you're like, you wrestled. I mean, I got asked the very first roll. Did you wrestle? And I was like, yeah, I did. They're like, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, well. <laughs> let's think about wrestling. Right. I mean, we start training this in kindergarten and it's very, we're in a hotbed for wrestling. So you're taking a person that's your size, that's very good condition from standing on their feet in front of you inside a 28 foot circle. And you're getting them to the ground, holding them down against their will for at least two seconds. Yeah. Right. So just think about the whole practice of the sport. I mean, it's very much um, of true, uh, the truest of sports that you could ever have. You know, it's a lot yeah. different than throwing a stick or doing, you know, anything like that. Just got to take a, another person that's just as athletic as you are and yep. hold them down on the ground. I mean, yeah. it's crazy when you think about it that way. So when they come in. It's actually they're, phenomenal they're, to watch too. <laughs> oh, it's wrestling's an, an absolute amazing sport. I believe everybody should have exposure to wrestling. If you have interest in jujitsu, if you have interest in judo or any martial art, you should have exposure to wrestling without question. Um, it's it's an, a fantastic way to keep in shape and defend yourself, but it's it makes your jujitsu better too. Um, 100%. Be yeah. It, so, yeah. What got you into refing? Uh, you know, so I wrestled a little bit in high school. I was never on the team. I, uh, I actually went 0 and 4. It was a different than my jujitsu career, right? So I went 0 and 4, got my, I didn't even know. I remember getting pinned one time at the <clears throat> uh, Jackson Open and not even know how it happened. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, thinking, wow, that, that was amazing. And it, that compelled me to become, get into adult wrestling. So that was kind of my foyer into finding jujitsu and looking into judo and looking into, okay, what's the closest thing to adult wrestling? Um, so I, I traveled down that path. So I got into jujitsu and fell in love with that. And then when my son uh, got of age, I thought, you know what, this is an opportunity for him to, to train wrestling. So he did. He got in wrestling, wrestled for 12 years, I coached for a long period of time, unbelievable wrestling exposure through camps and the best people in the world, uh, training with them and him training with them. So it got to a point where I no longer wanted to coach. I just wanted to wrestle. I just wanted to watch him. Sure. just wanted to be his fan, wanted yeah. to be a fan of the sport. But then there was a certain side of me that wanted to give back. And there was a big deficiency for wrestling officials that we need. There's 400 in the state. You know, when I started, there was about 1,100. Oh, wow. So, wow. Right. What a big, okay. big need for wrestling officials. So I thought, you know what, this is a, this is a compelling environment. Um, there's a need. Uh, it's great for the sport. I'm giving back, you know, and uh, it's just, it's an important role. And being an official is so, so important to that, to every sport, but wrestling in particular, um, it's, it's unbelievably important and you're part of a fraternity. So once you get going and once you get into it, you're like, you know, this is, this is such a great thing for everybody. It's not always easy. Um, there's plenty oh, of times sure. where it, sure. it tests yeah. every aspect of everything you have in you. When somebody's screaming at you, telling you you're a dirt ball and you're ruining their kids for life and, right. you, know, you know, um, but it's, it's very much uh, a gratifying, uh, I guess it's not a profession, gratifying area to be involved in. It's so. a profession, man. I mean, you know this, Brad, you've done it long enough. Um, I've done some refing and I did, I umpired in baseball um, when I was a kid. Can I, can you get, let me hear, give me something. Um, and, uh, but no, <laughs> no, no nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Call a strike. You're not going to yeah. do anything. You, no, you were no, an umpire. No, no. You I was an umpire. Yeah. Um, but it's a thankless it's job. Boring. I mean, we say it all the time it, and I will purposely go and shake every ref's hand of my kids that play no matter what i will purposely go over and shake their hand and tell them hey it's a thankless job you did a great job i may not have agreed with calls for that you did i may have been like that's a foul or whatever but you still did a great job because it's a super hard job because i know what it's like because i got screamed at and yelled at i've thrown guys out of games i threw coaches out that were screaming in my face and it just got to a point where it was like i'm you're out like you're done you can watch from the parking lot and you know, so I think paying that forward to tell young referees, especially it's like, look, mm -hmm. you're going to have this in your entire career. Um, so I can relate a little bit of like, I always, when you, I know you've said in the gym before, I've asked you this about, have you ever been called really bad things? And you brought up, you know, certain things and it's awful. Like it's awful for, to put that kind of information on somebody that's just doing a profession. <clears throat> that's your, that's your job. And it's not like you're doing it 
cheaply or crappy. You know what I mean? You're doing it to the best of your ability and you're not favored one way or the other. Trust me, everybody, no one's dropping Brad a hundred dollar bill and being like, make sure my kid wins. No one's doing that. <laughs> like this yeah. isn't a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so yeah, no, it's, that's a very true point. I, I would, ex I would consider the hundred though. Um, right. <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's, it can be a thankless job. It definitely tests your emotional intelligence from time to time. And it's not just wrestling. Wrestling is a very emotional and, and sure. um, quick sport. So it probably happens a little bit more uh, in wrestling, but um, all, all referees and umpires and everybody face the same challenges when it comes to uh, letting things slide and, and not, and being selective with hearing and, and really testing yourself, but it's a fantastic thing. If if anybody's in wrestling or around wrestling, I would strongly encourage them. Coaches, wrestlers now, previous wrestlers, whatever it may be, parents, uh, become an official. It's very simple. Officiate some matches. It's only going to help the sport. It's going to help grow the sport. It's going to help you become a better person involved in the sport. Uh, it's 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 definitely a worthwhile venture. And if you stick with it, great. You know, you're going to make a yeah, few bucks and sure. your network's going to grow. You're going to be part of a great fraternity. Um, and it's uh, something you can look forward to for four months, taking up every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> great job selling it right there at the end. Yeah. You were right there. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, tomorrow at 7 a.m. I ought to be up in uh, Firestone's gym. So, oh, is that where you're uh, at? Yeah, actually, I don't mind it. I, I want I, I say that, you know, kind of passively, but uh, I, I enjoy it. I really enjoy. Well, you were just honored, too, weren't you? Like at a, weren't a certain group of referees selected. I thought I saw a picture on Instagram with you and a bunch oh, of guys. That was Top Gun. Um, Top Gun. So, uh, yeah. Was that was, is that a big tournament? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Top, okay. Gun's, Top Gun's a huge tournament in Ohio, and I was fortunate enough to be on the crew for Top Gun. Um, I was amazing to be selected on that crew great group of guys from all over the state of ohio so it was a, a amazing experience to be part of that crew probably going to be part of that crew next year and look nice. forward to that and that's that's what i'm talking about you're part of that fraternity all those guys all walks all different walks of life come from all over the <clears> state <throat> we all work together and have the same common goal and that's try 100 percent. not one of us show up from three hours away or an hour away or wherever you're coming from for two days worth of wrestling at 10 hours a time, <laughs> right? right. Exactly. Any job, you know, right. But yeah. So we all want, we all give a hundred percent and that's a, it's a great thing to be part of. So, yeah. Could yeah. you ever get to where you're roughing like at a state tournament? I could this year okay. I'm doing a section in a district, um, okay. so doing nice. a D one district in North Canton. So there's four districts in the whole state. Yeah. So once you get beyond the district, there's only 30 officials at the state tournament. Okay. So you have pretty select group. And yeah. there are some politics that do come into yeah, wrestling sure. Sure there are. as they're yeah. doing any, any, right. You're right. So, <laughs> any, um, any sport <laughs> there, yeah. in anything. Yes. <laughs> there's guys that have uh, officiated the state tournament nine or 10 times that are just as good as guys that have never done it, you know? Yeah. So like that just goes, shit. but it's not, it's not um, your end goal when you're officiating. Right. If you go to the state tournament, you want to make sure you're one of the best in the state. You don't, you don't want to go there and uh, be 80% of what your capabilities are. You want to be at your prime and you want to be firing on all cylinders, like a sure, fighter yeah. pilot. That's just yeah. where yeah. you want to be. So um, <clears throat> when I do go to state, because I do want to make, that is a goal of mine. I, I want to make sure that I'm at the absolute prime, the best I can be. So, yeah. Have you seen the um, wrestling evolve from your first time getting into it? I mean, you know, even wrestling a little bit, but getting into the refing and then going to so many matches. I mean, you, you've seen more wrestling than most people do, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Because you have the ability in, in the privilege to be on that mat as a ref. Have you yeah. seen it change the sport change uh, good for good or bad? You know, we talk about this in a jujitsu world too, but I like to see the perspective from your side of, of that. Cause we can get in the jujitsu as well, but from wrestling yeah. standpoint, the difference, I would say this real quick. The <laughs> difference is at least wrestling has stayed the same, right? As far as the rules, for the most part, the point system, that's where it gets flooded or cloudy in jujitsu is there's so many different, so many different sets, sets that can affect the outcome sure. of things, you sure. know? Yeah. So I would say that, uh, I mean, I'm not counting oil wrestling or anything I've seen, um, <laughs> outside of a sanctioned environment like actual those are non-sanctioned by the way everybody right yeah <laughs> they're both they're all fun to watch so um 
wrestling has evolved and here's why jujitsu and grappling arts are becoming way more popular mm -hmm. um, social media from 15 years ago 16 years ago you think about just the uh, development of social media and what it's done not just for grappling sports and wrestling and jujitsu but for everything right yeah, it's sure. really helped uh, cross pollinate uh, a lot of different areas and and wrestling's one of those you're seeing way more creativity i could show you 50 clips right now where there's an MNRE role in a wrestling, a folk style mm. wrestling match. Yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but anyway, I, I can show them to you. But right? it's there, so, sure. Yeah. So you're seeing that cross pollination. And then you have guys like, uh, 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 who's out in Alliance, Chad? Is it top level? Uh, uh, yeah. no, next, next, level, next, next level. Next level. Next yeah. level is that Edward Bean, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. His yeah. son his son and his daughter, mm -hmm. both in folk style wrestling. And if you watch them, they have a different presence when they're on the mat. They're very yeah. good wrestlers. They, they yeah. figured out a very good conceptual way to mesh both in uh, high school wrestling. That didn't exist 10 years ago or 15 years ago. It yeah. just was something. I remember bringing up uh, the example of a butterfly sweep or using an elevator hook. Um, mm. when, when you're getting put on your back using an mm -hmm. elevator hook or, um, and I, I laughed at, I mean, literally by an old school wrestling coach, <clears throat> we're sticking to the basics. That's what we're doing. We're sticking to the basics. <laughs> I'm like, well, the basics are going to be different. The basics are different now. You know, the yeah. basics of when you wrestled are not the same as the basics today. And they're not going to yeah. be the same in five years. No. E evolving mm. is super important. Yeah. And if they are the same, there's a problem, right? Oh, there's, yeah. It's yeah. gross. I yeah. mean, think about jujitsu. It, it's the same. I mean, same well, classification, yeah. right? I mean, if it yeah. stayed basic, we would not I mean, have or people go ahead, Chad. The mechanics are probably the same, possibly. But like I, I teach and do a knee cut pass way different now than I did five years ago or whatever. The sure. You know, number is, time. So, yeah. yeah there's specific yeah. positions and specific moves, but I agree with you, Chad. The foundation and the spirit of the sport yeah. will always be the same framework. Yeah, It'll always be the same aspects of what you're starting to learn and the direction that you're going to be heading. And you get into those tributaries of so many different elements of a position or a move or um, a way of doing things. You mm -hmm. know, the buggy choke is something you see all the time now. It's yeah. social media has kind of brought out certain personalities where they have certain moves. The buggy yep. choke sure. was a thing. If you would have tried that 15 years ago, no. they would have. They would have laughed at you because yeah. you would have got smashed by Zanji. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it just didn't exist. They're like, get out of that position. Now they yeah. look for that position. Yeah. And you got guys like the Rotulos just, you know, killing people in that position. Yeah. They're they're just like throwing, work towards it. Yeah. Yeah. They throw darts chokes from unorthodox positions because their creativity yeah. and vision is mixed in with, you know, folk style or, or freestyle wrestling. And they get these right. different looks and ideas and angles. And it's just an evolution, you know. I was yeah. just watching a video of him the other day, and I he threw a Dars, uh, the the younger one, and I was just like, "How? Like, how did he just like out of nowhere? It was like magic. It was just like bam, bam, and he was in a Dars." And I was like, "Um, like you skipped like five steps, man. <laughs> like, yeah. like, not really, but for me, it was like you <laughs> yeah. skipped five steps, man. Like, it's like it was, magic." Right. It was magic, but that's how, also why they're on the side of the world and they're great grapplers. And Terry, know, how do you, how do you know which one's younger? <clears throat> well, the oh, one boy. that came out first <laughs> came out. He's I mean, not come out, but the one that, you know, was still in there. The, the, <laughs> they used to joke about it. Like yeah. one would say I held yeah. on to the other one, like yeah. fight, fighting. Cause people are like, did you guys always like wrestle and fight since you were kids? I'm like, well, you can go back and watch videos. They pretty yeah. much did yeah, since they, they were like five years old. They were scrapping, you know, yeah. like constantly. I was like, so, you know, but yeah, just good stuff, man. Yeah. Very uh, good. Uh, Evolution is is an important part. I think you have to embrace it. There's a lot of naysayers out out there, and a lot of wrestling specifically. It's uh, you know wretched with naysayers and people that say, "No, we got to do something this way and only this way," and uh, you know, blah blah oh, blah. Oh yeah, uh, you, you can't be like that. You gotta you gotta yeah. embrace change and uh, see how it fits in and makes you better. Have you ever wasn't the uh, oh, go ahead. I was just say wasn't the twister a wrestling move or a variation of it maybe? 
So the chicken or the egg, right? I don't know yeah. which came first. Uh, I mean, if you were to ask Eddie Bravo, well, he yeah. would say, you know, Twister. <laughs> so, but I will tell you that people were running the Gia team. That's what they called. Oh, they called it. That's right. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they were running that in the eighties. Um, the, you yeah. know, long before Eddie Bravo was even thought yeah. of. I can so, remember like Dave Miller. You know, from Carrollton, who I who I learned under Dave Russell way back in the day, and he's like, I was doing that back in whatever year it was, you know, the nineteen twenties. <laughs> no, I was yeah. gonna say nineteen hey, forties yeah. is what yeah. I was gonna go with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the guillotine. I, so I do a, a safety course, and I teach all these other uh, officials. You know, safety. Chad, you and I have talked about those cro- counter. Uh, yeah, uh, those positions that crossover positions, right between. Yeah submission grappling jujitsu and wrestling right, right. There, there's so many that cross over well I, I i have a powerpoint slideshow that i go through on wrestler safety because a lot of these officials that don't understand a submission and don't understand positional asphyxiation or positional strangulation things like that they can't recognize it so right. just this weekend i saw an official let a kid get put to sleep right on the mat oh yeah. wow really Oh yeah, you want to wow. see somebody's mom freak out? Yeah, no uh, kidding. Yeah, 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 there you go. That that's yeah. the key. Ha, ha, uh, have their kid get passed out, put to sleep, unconscious during a match. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you you got to teach officials, especially the ones that have been around a long time. Like, hey, this this position, the guillotine, it's called twister. It's a spinal contortion, yeah. <laughs> and it it hurts. If I it put hurts. you in that and I rip, I S grip your head and rip it over to the side, you're gonna scream. And yeah. it's not about back points anymore. It's about making sure your your spine doesn't get cracked. You sure, know? Yeah. So that that's something that I'm really passionate about. I'm really driven about is, <clears throat> is the recognition of harm that can come to wrestlers just through ignorance. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Officials will let things go and just because they don't know any better. Yeah. You know, they they wrestled in nineteen seventy eight. And it's not the same as today's wrestling. You know? Is there uh is there like rules for you guys that you have to I say recertified or kind of take that, like what you're teaching and what you're giving to these uh, officials, like to keep them up to date with things that are happening within the wrestling world, you know? So we have concussion protocol. I mean, it's, that's pretty, that's pretty much pretty clear. It. Yeah. 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 Uh, other than that, it's, it's just uh, uh, awareness. It's about us communicating. The head of officiating has been the head of officiating for 38 years. So when he started 40 years ago, officiate, <clears throat> he wrestled 40, 40 years ago. Um, him, he needs to be introduced to those techniques. Sure. He needs to understand that, you know, when you're in a uh, katakatami or a scarf hold and you transition to arm triangle, you're doing something different than trying to pin somebody. A pin will happen, but harm happens before, you know, so you need to make them aware. And those positions can be safe. <clears throat> But they have to be closely monitored and you have to be willing to stop that position if it becomes unsafe or potentially dangerous, you know. Yeah. So a lot how of many your, needs to take place there. Yeah. Sure. How many of your fellow um professionals, I'm just gonna say it that way, how how many of your uh fellow professionals train in jujitsu or you know, grappling or anything? Are you kind of like one of the only ones you know, or do you have some friends within your network that do this well? And so they know kind of the stuff too, that they can see just out of curiosity. Yeah, that's a great question. I I, I don't know how many people actually train. I, I know some people have done some MMA stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is something that uh, I run into from an officiating standpoint, but I'm not, I just saw Victor Vincenza. At a oh, match. did you? Yeah. This, he's yeah. coaching a wrestling team at Top Gun. Yeah. So I saw him, obviously somebody like that's going to be very, very knowledgeable, but he's a coach. He's a coach. And didn't he wrestle at a high level back in the day? I've heard that. Yeah. I've I've heard heard that. He wrestled at Ohio State. Yeah. You know, his wrestling at a collegiate level, D1 collegiate level, and that would have wrestled with Kevin Randleman. You know, that would have been that same time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, but as far as officials, most officials are guys that were Wrestle that wrestled, they wrestled ex wrestlers, yeah, and, and they're yeah. coming back, and, yeah, yeah, and they're coming back and giving back that way. I mean, I feel like you would like, I mean, your knowledge, Brad, is super deep, obviously, because you have these t- this so much time on the map seeing these refing this and then being in the gym. I mean, knowing you know, we always joke like Brad loves to use the Japanese terms for everything we do uh-huh. <laughs> in the gym, yeah. and everyone's always right. like, 
looking around like what does that mean and i'm like he'll explain it just hold on a second <laughs> like, like just give him a second uh, he'll get to it or if I'm he gonna, doesn't just ask him <laughs> i'm gonna reveal something um at least 60 percent of the time 100 percent of the time those are made up made so, up. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I know this but it's still great it's still don't great. let that leave this little room i was gonna okay? say you gave your secret yeah. away it's still great i always kind of like go with it because i knew chad i've told you this so mm-hmm. we have we have gsp dogs from brad's sister and that she, it, she didn't birth them, Terry. She didn't birth them. Yeah, see, I knew no. he was going to say this. This is normal yeah. for <laughs> I walked yeah. into it too. <laughs> right. But those are her puppies. Right. I mean, they were, but they yeah. were, but they well, didn't different extract show. from, yes, correct. A different show. But <laughs> see, he was like, oh, yeah, her husband, mm-hmm. he used to train Shamu. <laughs> yeah. I called bullshit on that. It's... I'm like, get out of here. So what'd he do? He proved me wrong. Gets the VHS tape. Yeah. Sticks yeah. it in the v- uh, VCR, and here he is diving off a of shampoo's nose. I'm like, wow, you're a badass. That's amazing. <laughs> now you train dogs? You couldn't find somewhere else to train big fish? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the, when they kind of scooped all of them up, all the shampoos went away, and they stopped yeah. that whole thing when people were slowly dying yeah. from they did away with it when uh they started killing the trainers on a consistent basis I yeah think, so. yeah on the regular it's like oh we got another one down like oh yeah. we should probably wrap this up right <laughs> but, however right. he is an amazing dog trainer if you like bird dogs because we have two bird dogs that are amazing and german short hairs they're such so sweet hairs. dogs too yeah they're lo- mm-hmm. i love them they're great they're great so yeah. they're nice gentle loving and they're pains in the butts because they like to jump in bed and go under the covers and take up the entire room and i'm like what is what is this like, get out of yeah. here yeah <laughs> so. it's kind of dog you want though so right yeah 100 yeah. percent, definitely Ch- chad needs a dog i have a dog i have a dog oh okay why don't you ever talk about your dog chad i don't know you never asked me what's your dog's name beans 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 yeah beans. oh that's okay i got yeah. it yeah it's a little dog we we did we uh he didn't even uh, ask what kind brad's like i know what i kind know of dog it is. yeah it's just a little dog yeah beans i mean you yeah beans name, you don't name a big dog beans no uh, no you name a big dog some <laughs> japanese throws type name or something right yeah so you know yeah. like yeah tie a tosh yeah <laughs> osoto gari there you go yeah there you go <laughs> How's yeah. golf game going or how did the golf game end? I should say with the seasons that you live in Northeast Ohio. Yeah. So golf is, uh, my fun outlet. So, you know, I have jujitsu, which is in, in wrestling and mainly jujitsu, which is my, my outlet for grounding and sensibility and humility and pushing myself and chosen suffering. As I always put, put it that way, golf's the opposite of that, right? So golf oh, is the time yes. when you go out and get some sunshine and you're goofing around with your buddies and you have a good time and uh it's always a lot of fun i look forward to golf season the only thing i hate about golf season quite honestly is it has it takes me away from uh jujitsu as much as i would like you know when the uh, sun's yeah. shining in ohio sure. you gotta get outside you sure know? You gotta get your vitamin d when you can man because we live under the umbrella of gray clouds so. yeah yeah you gotta you get, know? get get the big d but so, you're, but there's also a caveat to that whole golf thing too. I mean, your son does play golf in college, right? Mm-hmm, so yeah. that gives you an outlet also to, you know, not that you wouldn't have, but you know, you get the opportunity to spend time with him or watch him or. Oh watch, yeah, I, I really enjoy the one, stuff. the once a year I get to play with him. It's, uh, yeah. it's pretty fun. <laughs> like, the once a year. like finally, you know, like. <laughs> no, I do. I do get to caddy for him. So he plays in the Star County Amateur, and he plays in some uh, local big tournaments. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do. That is a an honor for me to go out and caddy for him. And he still lets me do that. So yeah. uh, hopefully this year I'll get to do that again. But it is pretty cool. Golf is something you can use your whole life, and uh, it's it's really it's cool to go out and watch him and, and play golf with him. And that is a very big part of golf for me too is is his involvement in golf so sure. i try i've tried to get him into jiu-jitsu many times but you know he's uh he's that 12 year wrestler and when he left the state tournament he left his shoes on the mat i don't think he's been back on a mat since really that yeah. was it he was done yeah yep so and that's okay yeah uh, i mean again you got to get out of it what you want mm-hmm. he wrestled for 12 years he's always going to be a wrestler his whole life he's never going to get away from that moniker of, of wrestler yeah you don't he's in that <laughs> he's in that fraternity forever and if he decides to come back to jiu-jitsu i'll gladly uh help him you know mm-hmm. champion him back into that but golf's great it's a different part of life it's a different aspect for sure do you think hey brad do you think um wrestling gave Caden like a different type of drive to play golf or like you know what i mean like the his outlook on things I do. 
I yeah. do. Not only that, from a physical standpoint, yeah. I believe that he... But the men uh, mental part. The mental part is definitely an aspect of it. Uh, something that he didn't even consider was the physical part and the, the uh, you know, how easy other things are outside of grappling and outside mm -hmm. of wrestling. But the, the mental part, he, he had a difficult time with... That was his main setback or main uh, difficulty he had in wrestling. Is, is getting past that barrier. Like you could be a champion. He, he experiences some of that in, in golf too, but uh, I think wrestling helps him not only for just golf, but life in general. Life, you know? yeah. yeah. Well, the yeah, adversity so. that you face in wrestling is it's very, obviously it's similar to jujitsu. Clearly, yeah. you know, you, it, that adversity is hard to overcome. And, and when you can learn that at a young age, I think you can, in my opinion, you flourish or you can flourish through really hard times throughout your entire life. Because when you're fighting someone and I, I say fighting, <clears throat> I mean, let's be honest. I mean, that's what you're kind of doing to pin someone to control them. As Brad said earlier yeah. on the show, you, you know what you I mean? You are fighting without, I don't you're, you're care fighting. what anybody <laughs> says. Right, you're fighting. Just because you're not punching each other in the teeth. There's right. lots fight. of versions of fighting. You don't want them to do what they're trying to do to you. That's yeah. a fight. I mean, that's all there is to it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So. And going through that, it makes you better it, it, as a person, an individual, uh, how you respect people, how you speak to people, um, you know, anything you do. And then when adversity actually strikes, you know, always hope that that doesn't happen to anybody. But if anything happens or even the littlest thing, a work thing or something, you can kind of get through it a little more easier. Because you've already went through something really, really hard. Now, some people are like, that's pretty lame. It's like, no, get them on the mats and we'll show you <laughs> that it's that it's actually not. It's actually a huge building block. And so if you wrestle as a young person, I think it kind of helps you throughout your entire life. You know? Yeah, I, I agree. I, and I would say the same thing for jujitsu or any grappling art. If you yeah. start at kindergarten and you start working through, because jujitsu is very, very difficult, right? I mean, you can get your arm broke. I mean, the, wrestling, the goal is to hold you down. And obviously there's a lot of pain that can be involved in wrestling, Sure, yeah. Yeah. but in jujitsu, the idea is to cause pain. The goal is pain. Right, right. Yeah. The goal yeah. is to cause pain to the Europe. Yeah. And my, the goal is for me to cause you so much discomfort and so <clears> much <throat> worry that you quit. <laughs> right. right. In wrestling, my, the goal is for you to hold me down on, uh, against, on my back. Um, so you know, there's no quitting in wrestling. Obviously, wrestling has what's blood time, one of the only sports. But um, if you train in something and you start at a young age and you dedicate yourself to it for however many years, especially something as hard as <laughs> jiu-jitsu or wrestling, um, you're going to get other ancillary benefits, not only mentally, emotionally, and physically, that are going to spill into all <clears> other <throat> aspects of your life. Uh, I know I have from jiu-jitsu. I, I, I can't tell you how many situations I'll be in a big meeting and somebody test you or somebody says something and um you know you want to spit in their face and smack them upside the head but instead <laughs> yeah i mean it's true you have an no, yeah i've been there 100 yeah. percent. I, yeah. I work um, in a professional yeah. atmosphere where i'm with meetings and people talking and i'm like i just i want to pull you to the mat right now <laughs> yeah. like you know yeah. what i mean like i know 100 percent what you're talking like, about I, I do think of this all the time like if we were outside i don't think you would talk to me that way <laughs> right. i really don't I right because we're in here apply right. that, like hey we're in we're in this safe place this is your <laughs> environment i'll let you have this moment but right. um and i know that and i know that in all of those situations and that level of confidence comes from jiu-jitsu that level of confidence comes from training and the people around me um so uh, i think that's a, a very good point as it spills into other aspects of your life and it's not just wrestling it's it's any yeah. martial art chad how long have you been doing jiu-jitsu that's my 20th year 20th okay. year it's awesome 20 Brad, years is that's Brad, 10 years you, longer than most most people ever train wrestling right yeah so um True. For, yeah. for for me i started in 2006 ish um training in another gym in a different type of way uh, but i started training east coast in 2008 so uh, I mean, what 17 that. years so roughly 17 yeah. That's yeah. where you're at. Yeah. But you're still, I mean, it's close. It's still a ton of time. I mean, obviously you're a wealth of knowledge, um, you know, for, obviously for us, I mean, to the, to the gym and like Chad said, you know, you're able to teach something different that maybe Chad wouldn't teach and, you know, stuff like that. Was there, has there ever been an aha moment since black belt came? I had the honor and privilege of everybody out there to be there the moment that, uh, Brad was promoted to black belt, which was very awesome. It was cool to see. It's the first time I've got to see something at that, you know, elevated rate of, um, of, you know, black belt, let's be honest. I mean, you put a ton of time in, that's a big thing. So was there like, a, was there, has there been an aha moment since then? Or was it just like, I'm going to sleep in this for a while? <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of both. All right. I would say 
it was a moment of realization that I've arrived uh, at at a point where I'm just starting. That's I and I know you've heard yeah. that before, but that's exactly sure. how I felt. I felt like man, I've waited so long and I've like trained and I took some time off and life and this and that. And all, I always kept returning to jiu-jitsu, always kept returning to jiu-jitsu. And um, it got to a point where I didn't even care about that anymore. I just wanted to come in and train and be and, and be part of the mats and be part of the environment and the culture and give back and just take part. And then uh, that happened, which I knew at some point it would happen. I really felt like I arrived at a starting point. I yeah. arrived at a, a, a place in life where not a lot of people get to. Uh, so I'm very fortunate from that standpoint. It does mean I didn't quit. I'm a white belt that didn't quit. And I have the opportunity to be an ambassador to, for people to experience the same things and get the same confidence and get the same physical training and the friends and the math. I have the opportunity to give back to that. So that that's kind of what it meant for me. And it was a big emotional unearthing um it really was it still is it still is it's uh, you spend some time alone thinking about that i like to spend time alone i mean (laughs) i knew this is (laughs) this is a good time for one of my sponsors (laughs) for all you people who are not watching on youtube i want you to pause the show i want you to go out there and subscribe to our show right now because brad (laughs) is forever the gym character of yeah. old age, older age, I should say, because we have many other characters that are younger <laughs> than all of us. Um, but Brad likes to bring up awesome jokes, and he's been around a long time, too. He's very quick-witted and clever. Mm. With awkwardness. Up. There's awkwardness. a sense, <laughs> sense of yes. entertainment and pleasure that lives inside of awkwardness. <laughs> so the ability to share that, it's funny to see people squirm a little bit. Yeah. 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 So if you're, if you're only listening, go see what he showed on screen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a surprise. I'm not going to reveal it without. And then uh, hit me up with a tweet. I'll get you a five percent off coupon. <laughs> <laughs> Handwritten. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a big check. Oops. Yeah, yeah. Take it to the big bank. That's right. Take it to the. Yep. Yes. So. Um, wow. So looks like uh, we're an hour in, and uh, I can't. I can't believe yeah. we haven't even cracked the. Crack the seal on some of the, some of the yeah. best. So we'll have to do it. We'll do a part two. But yeah. I do you know? before before we go anywhere. Yeah. I, I I, Ch- yeah. Chad knows what's coming. Mm-hmm. Steve Hyman. How? Why? What do you mean to you, man? Like what? Yeah. What legacy did he be? Did he leave behind for you that is still carried on today, and you want to see carried on for through the uh, East Coast Martial Arts and what he began? Because we all know that. East Coast Martial Arts did not begin without Steve Hyman. He is the the yeah. man, the myth, the legend who is, you know, got this. And obviously, you know, for me, I always say it constantly. Uh, it's a huge blessing for me because I have an opportunity to get put in a position to be around guys that are around someone that was great. And I see that being passed on. I love to be a part of that. And I want to pass that on to other people. Fortunately, yeah. I have guys like yourself and Chad and Pete and others that have been around him and seen him. So I get that put in me poured in me so mm-hmm. I can pay it forward. So what he poured in you, that's still going. So I met Steve when I was looking for a place to train. Um, and I really did think I was going to become some sort of fighter or something. And I, it was happenstance <clears throat> that I went up to um, Starbucks and he was sitting there talking to somebody I knew. And I, I met Steve initially in probably about 2006. Um, and he said, do you want to fight? And I said, I I didn't know how to answer that question. I said, I'm not <laughs> sure, you know. So that was my initial impression of Steve. He's immediately asking me, um, do I want to fight? So I thought, I thought about that for a long time. So I knew going into East Coast that that was kind of what I was going to have to answer. You know, is that something I wanted to do? And here to find out he has this fighting organization and training fighters, and he had a great career in fighting. So I'm like, man, this guy... He's got a lot to offer when it comes to fighting. I mean, I don't know what else. I don't know if that's what I want to do. I I know I want to. I want to train and I want to become formidable in in a martial art. Um, And that's definitely what he immediately imposed uh, upon me: is that you don't have to be coming in here to learn how to fight. You can be part of this culture and you can be part of the team, and we'll accept you. We don't care what uh, you know what your goals are. You're going to be part of this team. And then from there, I so- slowly started understanding what Steve Hyman was all about and what he install- instilled upon <clears> me <throat> and what I stole from him is he was a unifier. Steve 
brought people together like any yeah. other person I've ever seen in my life. And the mats and the gym were his conduit uh, for him to be <clears> able to do that. It didn't matter if you wanted to be a world champion UFC fighter or you wanted to come in and just hang out with guys and get an escape from your reality and just be part of something and, <clears> and, and, and co-mingle with other people. Um, he was a unifier. And I still, to this day, when I'm in, around people and I know both parties, but they don't know each other, I will Steve Hyman. I will introduce them. I don't care how <clears> painful <throat> it is or how awkward it is or whatever sure. may be behind it. Yeah. I put concerted effort because I know that's what Steve would do. Steve brought people together. Um, and I want to do that. That's, that's something that I <clears throat> have a passion and interest about. I love the idea <clears throat> of bringing people together and people, um, doing the different things and sharing and being part of something and being together as a, as opposed to apart. the world's a better place. If we bring people together. Yeah. hundred you know? percent. So and you're good at that. I mean, you're really good at that too. So I it's a gift, man. That. It is. I, I, it's a gift, I work yeah. at it and I try um, at that, but that was something that I, I watched him do. We'd go up to Starbucks yeah. and sit many, many, every Tuesday and every Thursday, we'd go up to Starbucks and sit there for a couple hours. And of course, people would really <clears> do that new Steve. I would meet 50 people. Yeah, yeah. I would get to the point where like, I don't want to meet anybody else. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm, done. Stop. Like, I'm like, who's that guy? Who's that girl? Who's that lady? Who's that? Yeah. You know, I'm like, just interested, rolling in these waves of people. And I mean, he, he just un tried to unite everybody, all everybody. The time. And that's really what he stood for. And I, I still to this day, um, I, I, that's part of me and he gave that to me and I, I, I will never change from that. That's awesome. And you so. would both say when you walk in the gym, anytime six fifteen in the morning, you're the first one there, Brad, you open that key, get in there, the presence, even though I know it's a different gym, you yeah. know, we've, we've elevated gotten <clears> bigger <throat> over time. It's still there, right? That presence is still there. Like you feel mm -hmm. the presence of what he instilled in you guys to pass on to us, to us students as we keep is and we keep evolving and what we will, what I will hopefully <clears throat> pass on to other people. I still try to take what you guys teach me, even from verbally things or how to act or how to treat people or, you know, talk about right. our gym, you know. There and, still is a strong feeling uh, when you're in there that he'll walk through that door. You know, I don't know if I'll ever get over that point. part of, of East Coast for me is the fact that um, uh, if he walked through, I, I, I wouldn't be overly shocked. You know, it feels like that. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. I know he's been gone for a long time and I know he's not going to walk anymore, but it, it, you have that little tiny bit of feeling like, um, you know, it, it could happen. You know, you just feel that yeah. way because of how strong of a person he was and <laughs> how he did bring everybody together and, and what he meant to so many people for so many years. So that, that's, that's kind of how I feel when I'm in there, especially yeah, when sure. nobody else is in there. I'm just kind of soaking in, look around. <clears throat> no, I don't remember half the white belt's names. <laughs> <laughs> he brought us all together. I'm like, this guy. It's cool if I just call him Ted. <laughs> hey one, yeah. hey two, hey three. I, I just, uh, Toby, I call him Cody. I call him. Uh, I, I can't even tell you how many names I've called him. I think his name's yeah. Toby. It's Toby. Yeah, I know yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, finally, I'm like Toby. I, I'm sorry, man. I, I promise I'll, I'll remember your name. I don't know if I have to put ta <laughs> tape on your forehead, but right, we're gonna like get the, this down. the old school days. <laughs> right from tape. Here's your name. Yeah. Put that on your forehead. <laughs> and he, he's good about it, but yeah. So I, I think that you know that is something of when you talk about presence or aura or whatever else you could label it, any corny thing you want to label it. It's, sure. For me, I feel it. I feel like that uh, he's, there's still s what he built is still existing. He would be really proud. He'd be proud yeah. of Chad. You know, yeah. Chad's a lifer. He's a lifelong dedicated servant. He has no other career, no other focus. Mm. He would be enormously proud. He took a chance on Chad. He, he did. You know, he had this long, successful standing martial arts practice. He had a guy that had ran it pretty much for 17 or 18 years. And he, he took a chance on Chad. And uh, that was that was a great decision on his part because that legacy is getting carried on long after Steve is gone. Um, Chad does a fantastic job of carrying that on. So 100 percent, man, <clears throat> definitely. Definitely. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I, I mean, I love every other place that's given the option for it, but obviously this is my home. I wouldn't have it tattooed on me if it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who thought? He, he, I'm sure he thinks we're all idiots. We have these tattoos of East Coast on us, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. So look what yeah. Chad did. But, no, he convinced yeah. all these guys to get tattoos. Yeah, on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's uh, uh he, I, I don't know. I, I maybe I think he maybe he would be proud too. I, I think so. There'd be a little of both. Like he yeah, would say, you guys like, are a bunch of nu knuckleheads. But yeah, as much knuckleheads as I hear is about exactly that. what he would say. Yeah, too. knuckleheads. Yeah. Yeah. Knuckleheads. Yeah. Why you put that on your body? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. So, cool. All right, man. Chad, you got anything? No, good yeah, way to end do. it, dude. You have I, one uh, thing. You have one I thing. Have, what do I you, have? You promoted Brad almost two years ago, right? No. This summer will be ago. two. Well, oh, maybe, maybe this this August will yeah, be yeah. two. This yes. August will be two. Look, yeah. I always yeah. um uh I round up guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. A lot. So if you uh if you ever want to loan me money, I'm rounding up. <laughs> if you want to support the show <laughs> and, and throw us some dollars like round up <laughs> but kick it up a notch right kick it up a notch um what was it like to promote like how exciting was that for you chad for i've never me? asked this uh, yeah because yeah, i know I, uh brad and matt craddock which we've had on a show yeah and, and brad were your first two promotions to black belt you've got to yeah. see them come through the entire matt craddock. I know program <laughs> you know that guy <laughs> you know yeah, that guy me, i'm sure him you guys and have johnny some hopkins stories. used to blaze that shit up yeah, every night slow kettering <laughs> it was cool it was it was cool it was uh i don't even know how to explain it it just it you know it felt right it wasn't like i wasn't nervous really or scared or whatever you want to call it it was just the right time you know yeah it was and as a coach that, i think that's yeah that's yeah, cool guys, i mean you, you guys you that know. have stuck around the loyalty is big to us and uh you know could have went somewhere and probably got promoted sooner maybe or anything uh but uh yeah it just felt right Awesome. Yeah, I, I I mean there was a sense of pride that day for you. Yeah, Jen. I, I felt mm -hmm. that um, for sure. You know, I think I've not always been the easiest. Um, <laughs> one thing I appreciate about Chad is he does, even to his aggravation, does invite other thought, and that's the sign of intelligence. You know, it's really important that you have smart people around you, and that you invite and invoke thought and ideas, and you ask and you tap into those things, and that's right. really really something chad does on a regular basis um so and that day i feel like there was a sense of pride and i feel like there was a sense of like our team's growing you know mm -hmm. uh, for sure yeah it's come a long way from those early days where like if we had i remember you know was broom teaching when you started i'm sure he was right uh possibly i didn't know or just he was. yeah i mean cody butzer <laughs> right. I, cody yeah. butzer was uh teaching yeah, um, you were, you were teaching, but yeah. you know, shortly thereafter, Charles Allen would come. And, yeah. Uh, he, but I can was, remember broom when I was, you know, when I started broom was teaching Yeah, and uh, he just got his blue belt. But if we had 10 people in a class, he's like, how are we going to, how am I going to teach all these people? Mm, right. And now you know, you walk in and now sometimes any we given, have 40 guys in Yeah, class. any given evening, there's 20 to 30 in the morning, there's 10 to 15 and like, you know, we yeah. just added, we just added that 8 a.m. class on Mondays for Pete and Pete had 17 people show up. To oh really? Day. Yeah. yeah. Monday, now, seventeen people. Seventeen wow. people. Now it was a holiday, and you know, but consistent. I mean, if we even get half of that, it's not six a, in the morning, Brad. So the oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like, amazing. Seventeen people. No, I, I I believe in that. I think you, yeah. expansion is the only way you grow. I was with Chad and I've talked about that with like MMA Fit and stuff like that. You know, yeah. Um, and or expanding the schedule, offering, and now you, you have to have personnel to be able to do it. That's right. the key. 100%. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. You gotta have people um you, you gotta have that currency of people and pete saying hey i'm gonna start at 8 a.m that that just goes to show you right yeah. there i mean 17 people that's unbelievable mm -hmm. amazing yeah, yeah you're awesome. right like we would open up on wednesday no gi and you'd have eight people show up and two of them were professional fighters <laughs> yeah yeah right. one yeah. was charles manson's grandson yeah. i mean <laughs> oh, that's right <laughs> Free, I, I, yeah. 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 Hey, let, let's Where's fight this guy <laughs> yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, I can remember him watching him and Butzer go at it. Oh yeah, yeah, like that was fun. Big Nate. Yeah, no, no, no. This was a no, uh, no. Jason Freeman was his name. Oh. Jason Freeman. This is way Freebird. back. Freebird was his nickname. He was an MMA fighter. Yeah. He was. A real you said good MMA though. fighter. Who? who? But Cody Butzer. Butzer. Cody Butzer. Butzer. Oh, Butzer. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Butzer. Um, Butzer. Okay. So Cody was a badass. Still is. Um, he's a really good wrestler. State champ at Northwest. Freak athlete. Um, Steve Heineman kind of took him under his wing and he was there training wrestling. Basically, Wednesday nights was what we considered no gi, and he was the coach uh for, for a certain period of time, not forever. Yeah. But, um the, the uh Jason Freeman um <clears throat> is is um Charles Manson's grandson, and he 
was training for Strike Force at the time. No, and, okay. and those two would would start wrestling around, and they, you know, the whole mat would clear. Yeah, you just watch them. You know, <laughs> yeah, this, nuts. this big guy's getting ready to train. You know, and this other guy's ten and zero or eleven and zero in the cage. Yeah, and we would just sit there and watch them. And I'll never forget uh, the only time I think I've been can opener submissioned submitted through a can opener like was just it, locked behind my head and just, just ripping my chin oh, through my sternum man. was freebird and um i, I tap and he finally let's go i'm like oh my god i can't <laughs> even talk my neck muscles are all just inflamed and he goes that week and wins the heavyweight title and strike force the following tuesday unfortunately he d- he failed a drug test. Um, for yeah. Some oh, okay. Steroids. I'm like, yeah. maybe I'm not as weak as I think. I am. <laughs> for a minute, Brad was like, "Oh my gosh, what's happening? My head's gonna come off here." Too. Um. So yeah, Freeman though he uh, <laughs> a great guy. I, I actually he lives in Florida now, and uh, if he ever were happened to listen to this, he was a great training partner too. So he helped me earn this. Nice. I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys yet. So 2009 like, Arnold World Grappling Gold Medalist yeah. Brad Scarborough. Listen, Naga when Naga was Naga, Naga right? Yeah, yeah. Not Naga's not Naga, Naga anymore, right? Well, I, I mean, I can't. I don't know what it is today. Okay, uh, but back then, what this was was Naga. I didn't know if you wanted to throw any shade on him. No, no, no shade. Uh, right. Anybody that can win anything, I'm, I'm a fan of. <clears throat> you know, I like winners. Yeah, it's what, what we, we do. do. We it's wake we up do. every morning. We piss excellence. That's right. That's right. Winners do. First right. or last, right? That's right. Throw Grandpa's medals off the bridge. Right. So well, this has been fun. Uh, yes, yeah, you guys have, what yeah. number is this, Terry? What, what this number? is 107. 107. Episode huh? 107. Yeah. Why, why wasn't I 100? I, I yeah. <laughs> I mean, I knew I, I told Chad, I was like, Brad's going to be upset because he went past well, 100. He should have been like episode one. Why, didn't we have him like scheduled before? We, we took did. A we yeah. had like scheduled. I want to tell you guys something. <laughs> Mark it down right now. 200. I want to be 200. You want to be 200? All Bring right. me back. Bring me back. Bring you back Mark at 200. It yeah. All right. It'll be, it down. it'll be special. It'll be way better than this. All right. Can we do it'll it? Can we do it? Doors off. Can that's, we do it at the uh, Let's I go Heart up at the iHeart Studio in Cleveland, Ohio. You want to do that? You want to do it? You want to do it? That'd we'll we'll be cool. We yeah. got to have a great, great topic going in and we'll talk about whatever. But yeah, we'll we'll leave there and then we'll head over to my buddy Larry Flint's place. That's an iHeart. Don't we they have do something that. in Canton, Brad? We have a did Canton you tell office. me? Yeah. Oh, do you guys have yeah. a Canton office now? Okay. You don't have a we studio do. in Canton, though, do you? Yep. Oh, they do yeah. now. Okay. Few, okay. A few studios. I think it's been there quite some time, actually. Okay. It's on uh, across from where old Camelot used to be. What is the mm-hmm. name of that? Uh, free, free, freeway or free freedom? I think it's freedom. freedom. Oh, freedom. freedom. I, oh, I freedom. freedom Avenue. Avenue. Yeah, freedom, freedom, freedom Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know but, exactly. I heard studios right over there. Nice. And that's where Stansbury Stansbury Studios in there. So, but yeah, the office in Cleveland is, is really cool and uh, we can definitely come up there and do it. We've See everyone out there it. listening. We need someone, we need sponsors to come in and be like, Hey, you guys, this is going to be your new job. Like we want you just to talk about stuff Two people. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Eh, someone well, we, will be right now. They're like, dude, don't quit your day job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. We could do it though. You know, we could have uh, just throwing out some ideas. You could have a format where you bring in a few people and you have a panel kind of like mm-hmm. a, well, a fight, yeah. like a companion show. That'd be kind of right. cool. We could do that up at the office and then head over to the melting pot and uh <laughs> get down, you know, get down. get down and dirty. Have a good time. That's right. <laughs> All right, my man. Appreciate you greatly, Brad, for everything, man. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. As always, uh keep doing what you're doing. God bless you and the family, man, and keep it up. You guys too. Thanks for doing this. I really yeah, glad. Yeah. I was really happy to hear you guys got back together and you're doing this again. Thanks, it's, man. Uh, the it's, band uh, is back together. The band's twenty thousand downloads. People are listening, man. Yeah. So good yeah, job. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank Thanks. you for yeah. doing this. Yeah. All right, everyone Peace. out there. Yep. We'll see you guys till next Later time. On. Later. See you, homies. <laughs>